in the heart of Europe. Thousands of Arab fighters. Zenitsa, 1995. They come to wage holy war in support of the Bosnian army. Their commanders had bigger plans. The Bosnian president, Alija Izabegovic, had formed a local purely Muslim brigade. He then allowed into the country up to 6,000 foreign Muslims, mostly from the Middle East. Some mixed into the Muslim brigade. Some fought in their own unit called the Mujahideen. They committed many atrocities. The tapes Sky News have obtained include beheadings and signs of torture. Their headquarters was this ruined factory, a fearsome place then. Memories die hard. Our approach was viewed with great suspicion. We've been refused permission to film. Our car number plates have been noted down and the guards are already on their mobiles. This is a story a lot of people don't want to be told. And why? It's because of the hundreds of Mujahideen who used to be down there, well, some of them are still round here. Our information is that at least dozens of Mujahideen, possibly hundreds, stayed on. Some hung up their Kalashnikovs, but not all. I think it would be naive to say that there aren't some people who have remained over here and that they've been infiltrated for certain reasons. British citizen Benjamin Zeffarani stayed on using his fake Italian passport. He was shot dead in Zenica in March 97, carrying out a robbery to raise funds for jihad. We think he's buried in the village of Meharitsi along with many other Mujahideen. We began filming. The villagers were so hostile, we stopped. This isn't just about history, it's about now. Documents passed to us indicate the scale of the problem. Sky News has obtained several documents marked top secret. Amongst them, this, which lists 1,700 names of Mujahideen fighters. There are dozens of Saudis, Yemenis, Egyptians, and among them there are five Britons. For example, Sehid Jassir, Ingleska, which means English, Poguinho which means killed in action. And here, another Ingleska, Muhammad Aisa. Other names marked as English are Abu Kuteba Asim, Abu Khalid Abdul Razak, and Abdul Kelik Abdul Kudus. These pages show the names of several hundred Mujahideen who were given Bosnian passports after the war, and that they changed their names. For example, Abdullah Khalid becomes Klokic. Western intelligence agencies are now pressing the Bosnians to look into exactly where these people are and what they're doing. And asking, have any of these men been in contact with the three young Bosnian Muslims arrested last month on terrorism charges? Firearms, explosives and a suicide video confession were seized. The youths are being held in this Sarajevo jail. There have been seven connected arrests made in Sweden. People had this type of uh, munitions, they had explosives, they had firearms, and obviously they intended to use that for some ulterior purpose, whether it was within Bosnia Herzegovina or elsewhere. They were planning some type of activities, a terrorist type activity, and that is actually worrying that people are actually here in Bosnia doing that. The arrests have shocked the Bosnians, locals asking where did these young men get their ideas from? Bosnia's version of Islam includes lipstick and beer, but it wasn't just fighters that infiltrated in 95, it was ideas. In the shadow of the war-scarred apartment blocks has risen the country's biggest mosque, the King Faisal al Saud, built with Saudi money. This mosque has nothing to do with terrorism but it does expound the radical Saudi Wahhabi Islam, which elsewhere has been interpreted as calling for jihad. In Sarajevo now, the influence of Saudi ideas can be found all over the city. Until the Wahhabis arrived, you couldn't find Bosnian Muslims sporting beards like this, wearing clothes like these, or believing ideas such as those leading to the arrest of the young local men. 
Radical Islam is attempting to plant deep roots in the community, even if it's an uphill battle. This side of Bosnia far more represents where the country is, both geographically and culturally. But the seeds for change were planted back in 95. The war brutalized a generation. These are Bosnian Muslim forces desecrating an Orthodox church. Here we see a Bosnian Serb being interrogated. He knows his fate. We see him later partially beheaded. The Bosnian Muslims didn't need much encouragement to commit atrocities. All sides were engaged in the practice. But the foreign fighters brought with them a new world view, jihad. Here an Arab man tries to persuade his Bosnian colleagues to let him kill Serb prisoners. Eventually he leads them off to their deaths. There were some serious players sent to Bosnia, among them the man who planned 911, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, and Abu Suleiman al Maki here on the right of Osama bin Laden. One reason he's sitting down, he was shot in the legs in Bosnia. British Muslim convert Andrew Rao, jailed this year on terrorism charges, was also in Bosnia in the mid 90s. <laughs> Bosnian Serb police headquarters has been tracking the jihadists. Officers here, many of whom fought against the Mujahideen, believe vital years were lost after the war because there was no unified force covering the whole country. They claim the long-term aim is the radicalization of the whole region's Muslims. The main aim for them is be infiltrated in our society here uh, to produce a lot of, lot of elements as a potential for logistics and some operational support for their units, elements, parts, uh, individuals uh, uh, as a potential threat for Europe. Uh. The Mujahideen video shows their flag planted in Bosnia and speaks of spreading their jihad. At the end of the war, many of these men marched off to other conflicts. They tried to use Bosnia as a launching pad. So far, they failed. But Bosnia is a useful place to hide, plan and move. It's why some stayed on. To Marshall Sky News, Central Bosnia.